Seaborgium is a synthetic chemical element with symbol SG and atomic number 106. It is named after the American nuclear chemist Glenn T. Seaborg. As a synthetic element, it can be created in a laboratory but is not found in nature. It is also radioactive. The most stable known isotope, 269 SG, has a half life of approximately 14 minutes. In the periodic table of the elements, it is a d block transactinide element. It is a member of the seventh period and belongs to the group six elements as the fourth member of the 6D series of transition metals. Chemistry experiments have confirmed that seaborgium behaves as the heavier homologue to tungsten in group 6. The chemical properties of seaborgium are characterized only partly, but they compare well with the chemistry of the other group 6 elements. In 1974, a few atoms of seaborgium were produced in laboratories in the Soviet Union and in the United States. The priority of the discovery and therefore the naming of the element was disputed between Soviet and American scientists, and it was not until 1997 that International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry established seaborgium as the official name for the element. It is one of only two elements named after a living person at the time of naming, the other being Oganesson, element 118. History. Following claims of the observation of elements 104 and 105 in 1970 by Albert Giorso et al., at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a search for element 106 using oxygen-18 projectiles and the previously used Californium-249 target was conducted. Several 9.1 MeV alpha decays were reported and are now thought to originate from element 106, though this was not confirmed at the time. In 1972, the HILAC accelerator received equipment upgrades, preventing the team from repeating the experiment, and data analysis was not done during the shutdown. This reaction was tried again several years later, in 1974, and the Berkeley team realized that their new data agreed with their 1971 data, to the astonishment of Giorso. Hence, element 106 could have actually been discovered in 1971 if the original data was analyzed more carefully. Two groups claimed discovery of the element. Unambiguous evidence of element 106 was first reported in 1974 by a Russian research team in Dubna led by Yuri Oganesian, in which targets of lead 208 and lead 207 were bombarded with accelerated ions of chromium 54. In total, 51 spontaneous fission events were observed with a half-life between 4 and 10 milliseconds. After having ruled out nucleon transfer reactions as a cause for these activities, the team concluded that the most likely cause of the activities was the spontaneous fission of isotopes of element 106. The isotope in question was first suggested to be seaborgium 259, but was later corrected to seaborgium 260. 20,882 peta bits plus 5,424 CR 260,106 SG plus 2 N 20,782 peta bits plus 5,424 CR 260,106 SG plus Na few months later in 1974, researchers including Glenn T. Seaborg, Carol Alonso and Albert Giorso at the University of California, Berkeley, and E. Kenneth Hewlett from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, also synthesized the element by bombarding a Californium-249 target with oxygen-18 ions, using equipment similar to that which had been used for the synthesis of element 104 five years earlier, observing at least 70 alpha decays, seemingly from the isotope seaborgium 263 meters with a half-life of 0.9 plus or minus 0.2 seconds. The alpha daughter Rutherfordium 259 and granddaughter Nobelium 255 had previously been synthesized and the properties observed here matched with those previously known, as did the intensity of their production. The cross section of the reaction observed, 0.3 nanobarns, also agreed well with theoretical predictions. These bolstered the assignment of the alpha decay events to seaborgium 263 meters. 
24,998 cf plus 188 meters 106 sg plus 410 n 259,104 rf plus alpha 255,102 no plus alpha a dispute thus arose from the initial competing claims of discovery, though unlike the case of the synthetic elements up to element 105, neither team of discoverers chose to announce proposed names for the new elements, thus averting an element naming controversy temporarily. The dispute on discovery, however, dragged on until 1992, when the IUPAC, IUPAP Transfermium Working Group TWG, formed to put an end to the controversy by making conclusions regarding discovery claims for elements 101 to 112, concluded that the Soviet synthesis of Seaborgium 260 was not convincing enough, lacking as it is in yield curves and angular selection results. Whereas the American synthesis of Seaborgium 263 was convincing due to its being firmly anchored to known daughter nuclei. As such, the TWG recognized the Berkeley team as official discoverers in their 1993 report. Seaborg had previously suggested to the TWG that if Berkeley was recognized as the official discoverer of elements 104 and 105, they might propose the name Kerchatovium symbol KT for element 106 to honor the Dubna team, which had proposed this name for element 104 after Igor Kershatov, the former head of the Soviet nuclear research program. However, due to the worsening relations between the competing teams after the publication of the TWG report because the Berkeley team vehemently disagreed with the TWG's conclusions, especially regarding element 104, this proposal was dropped from consideration by the Berkeley team. After being recognized as official discoverers, the Berkeley team started deciding on a name in earnest. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 we were given credit for the discovery and the accompanying right to name the new element. The eight members of the Giorso group suggested a wide range of names honoring Isaac Newton, Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci, Ferdinand Magellan, the mythical Ulysses, George Washington, and Finland, the native land of a member of the team. There was no focus and no front runner for a long period, then one day Al Giorso walked into my office and asked what I thought of naming element 106, Seaborgium. I was floored. Seaborg's son Eric remembered the naming process as follows. With eight scientists involved in the discovery suggesting so many good possibilities, Giorso despaired of reaching consensus, until he awoke one night with an idea. He approached the team members one by one, until seven of them had agreed. He then told his friend and colleague of 50 years, We have seven votes in favor of naming element 106 Seaborgium. Will you give your consent? My father was flabbergasted, and, after consulting my mother, agreed. The name Seaborgium and symbol SG were announced at the 207th National Meeting of the American Chemical Society in March 1994 by Kenneth Hewlett, one of the co discoverers However, IUPAC resolved in August 1994 that an element could not be named after a living person, and Seaborg was still alive at the time. Thus, in September 1994, IUPAC recommended a set of names in which the names proposed by the three laboratories the third being the GSI Helmholtz Center for Heavy Ion Research in Darmstadt, Germany with competing claims to the discovery for elements 104 to 109 were shifted to various other elements, in which Rutherfordium RF, the Berkeley proposal for element 104, was shifted to element 106, with Seaborgium being dropped entirely as a name. This decision ignited a firestorm of worldwide protest for disregarding the historic discoverer's right to name new elements, and against the new retroactive rule against naming elements after living persons. The American Chemical Society stood firmly behind the name Seaborgium for element 106, together with all the other American and German naming proposals for elements 104 to 109, approving these names for its journals in defiance of IUPAC. At first, IUPAC defended itself, with an American member of its committee writing, "...discoverers don't have a right to name an element. They have a right to suggest a name. And, of course, we didn't infringe on that at all." However, Seaborg responded, This would be the first time in history that the acknowledged and uncontested discoverers of an element are denied the privilege of naming it. 
Bowing to public pressure, IUPAC proposed a different compromise in August 1995, in which the name Seaborgium was reinstated for Element 106 in exchange for the removal of all but one of the other American proposals, which met an even worse response. Finally, IUPAC rescinded these previous compromises and made a final, new recommendation in August 1997, in which the American and German proposals for elements 104 to 109 were all adopted, including Seaborgium for element 106, with the single exception of element 105, named Dubnium to recognize the contributions of the Dubna team to the experimental procedures of transactinide synthesis. This list was finally accepted by the American Chemical Society, which wrote, In the interest of international harmony, the committee reluctantly accepted the name Dubnium for element 105 in place of Honium the American proposal, which has had long-standing use in literature. We are pleased to note that Seaborgium is now the internationally approved name for element 106. Seaborg commented regarding the naming, I am, needless to say, proud that U.S. chemists recommended that element 106, which is placed under tungsten 74, be called Seaborgium. I was looking forward to the day when chemical investigators will refer to such compounds as Seaborgous chloride, Seaborgic nitrate, and perhaps, sodium Seaborgate. This is the greatest honor ever bestowed upon me. Even better, I think, than winning the Nobel Prize. Future students of chemistry, in learning about the periodic table, may have reason to ask why the element was named for me, and thereby learn more about my work. Seaborg died a year and a half later, on 25 February 1999, at the age of 86. <laughs> Isotopes Super-heavy elements such as seaborgium are produced by bombarding lighter elements in particle accelerators that induces fusion reactions. Whereas most of the isotopes of seaborgium can be synthesized directly this way, some heavier ones have only been observed as decay products of elements with higher atomic numbers. Depending on the energies involved, fusion reactions that generate super-heavy elements are separated into hot and cold. In hot fusion reactions, very light, high-energy projectiles are accelerated toward very heavy targets actinides, giving rise to compound nuclei at high excitation energy approximately 40 to 50 MeV that may either fission or evaporate several 3 to 5 neutrons. In cold fusion reactions, the produced fused nuclei have a relatively low excitation energy approximately 10 to 20 MeV, which decreases the probability that these products will undergo fission reactions. As the fused nuclei cool to the ground state, they require emission of only one or two neutrons, and thus, allows for the generation of more neutron-rich products. The latter is a distinct concept from that of where nuclear fusion claimed to be achieved at room temperature conditions see cold fusion. Seaborgium has no stable or naturally occurring isotopes. Several radioactive isotopes have been synthesized in the laboratory, either by fusing two atoms or by observing the decay of heavier elements. Twelve different isotopes of seaborgium have been reported with atomic masses 258 to 267, 269, and 271, three of which, seaborgium 261, 263, and 265, have known metastable states. All of these decay only through alpha decay and spontaneous fission, with the single exception of seaborgium 261 that can also undergo electron capture to dubnium 261. There is a trend toward increasing half lives for the heavier isotopes, thus, the heaviest three known isotopes, 267 Sg, 269 Sg, and 271 Sg, are also the longest lived, having half lives in minutes. Some other isotopes in this region are predicted to have comparable or even longer half-lives, with the longest-lived predicted isotope being 272 Sg which is expected to have a half-life of about an hour. Additionally, 263 Sg, 265 Sg, 265 MSg, as well as the predicted 268 Sg have or should have half-lives measured in seconds. 
All the remaining isotopes have half-lives measured in milliseconds, with the exception of the shortest-lived isotope, 261 MSG, with a half-life of only 92 microseconds. The proton-rich isotopes from 258 SG to 261 SG were directly produced by cold fusion. All heavier isotopes were produced from the repeated alpha decay of the heavier elements hassium, darmstadtium, and fluorovium, with the exceptions of the isotopes 263 MSG, 260 264 SG, 265 SG, and 265 MSG, which were directly produced by hot fusion through irradiation of actinide targets. The 12 isotopes of seaborgium have half-lives ranging from 92 microseconds for 261 MSG to 14 minutes for 269 SG. Properties. Topic: Physical. Seaborgium is expected to be a solid under normal conditions and assume a body-centered cubic crystal structure similar to its lighter congener tungsten. It should be a very heavy metal with a density of around 35.0 g per cc, which would be the fourth highest of any of the 118 known elements, lower only than borium 37.1 g per cc, mitnerium 37.4 g per cc, and hassium 41 g per cc, the three following elements in the periodic table. In comparison, the densest known element that has had its density measured, osmium, has a density of only 22.61 g per cc. This results from seaborgium's high atomic weight, the lanthanide and actinide contractions, and relativistic effects, although production of enough seaborgium to measure this quantity would be impractical, and the sample would quickly decay. Chemical. Seaborgium is the fourth member of the 6D series of transition metals and the heaviest member of group 6 in the periodic table, below chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten. All the members of the group form a diversity of oxanions. They readily portray their group oxidation state of plus 6, although this is highly oxidizing in the case of chromium, and this state becomes more and more stable to reduction as the group is descended. Indeed, tungsten is the last of the 5D transition metals where all four 5D electrons participate in metallic bonding. As such, seaborgium should have plus 6 as its most stable oxidation state, both in the gas phase and in aqueous solution, and this is the only oxidation state that is experimentally known for it. The plus 5 and plus 4 states should be less stable and the plus 3 state, the most common for chromium, would be the least stable for seaborgium. Experimental chemical investigation has been hampered due to the need to produce seaborgium one atom at a time, its short half-life, and the resulting necessary harshness of the experimental conditions. The isotope 265 Sg and its isomer 265 Msg are advantageous for radiochemistry. They are produced in the 248 Cm 5 n reaction. This stabilization of the highest oxidation state occurs in the early 6d elements because of the similarity between the energies of the 6d and 7s orbitals, since the 7s orbitals are relativistically stabilized and the 6d orbitals are relativistically destabilized. This effect is so large in the seventh period that seaborgium is expected to lose its 6d electrons before its 7s electrons sg, rn, 5f146 d47 s2, sg plus, rn, 5f146 d37 s2, sg2 plus, rn, 5f146 d37 s1, sg4 plus, rn, 5f146 d2, sg6 plus, rn, 5f14. Because of the great destabilization of the 7s orbital, SGIV should be even more unstable than WIV and should be very readily oxidized to SGVI. The predicted ionic radius of the hexacoordinate SG6 plus ion is 65 pm, while the predicted atomic radius of seaborgium is 128 pm. Nevertheless, the stability of the highest oxidation state is still expected to decrease as LRIII greater than RFIV greater than DBV greater than SGVI. Some predicted standard reduction potentials for seaborgium ions in aqueous acidic solution are as follows: 
Seaborgium should form a very volatile hexafluoride SGF6 as well as a moderately volatile hexachloride SGCl6, pentachloride SGCl5, and oxychlorides SgO2Cl2 and SgOCl4. SgO2Cl2 is expected to be the most stable of the seaborgium oxychlorides and to be the least volatile of the group 6 oxychlorides, with the sequence Mu2Cl2 greater than WO2Cl2 greater than SgO2Cl2. The volatile seaborgium v compounds SgCl6 and SgOCl4 are expected to be unstable to decomposition to seaborgium v compounds at high temperatures, analogous to MOCl6 and MOO. Cl4. This should not happen for SgO2Cl2 due to the much higher energy gap between the highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals, despite the similar SgCl bond strengths similarly to molybdenum and tungsten. Thus, in the first experimental chemical studies of seaborgium in 1995 and 1996, seaborgium atoms were produced in the reaction 248Cm 4N 266Sg, thermalized, and reacted with an O2, HCl mixture. The adsorption properties of the resulting oxychloride were measured and compared with those of molybdenum and tungsten compounds. The results indicated that seaborgium formed a volatile oxychloride akin to those of the other group 6 elements, and confirmed the decreasing trend of oxychloride volatility down group 6. Sg plus O2 plus 2 HCl SgO2 Cl2 plus H2 In 2001, a team continued the study of the gas phase chemistry of seaborgium by reacting the element with O2 in a H2O environment. In a manner similar to the formation of the oxychloride, the results of the experiment indicated the formation of seaborgium oxide hydroxide, a reaction well known among the lighter group 6 homologues as well as the pseudohomolog uranium. 2Sg plus 3O2 2SgO3 SgO3 plus H2O SgO2 O2 molybdenum and tungsten are very similar to each other and show important differences to the smaller chromium, and seaborgium is expected to follow the chemistry of tungsten and molybdenum quite closely, forming an even greater variety of oxanions, the simplest among them being seaborgate, SgO2-4, which would form from the rapid hydrolysis of Sg 6 plus 6, although this would take place less readily than with molybdenum and tungsten tungsten as expected from seaborgium's greater size. Seaborgium should hydrolyze less readily than tungsten in hydrofluoric acid at low concentrations, but more readily at high concentrations, also forming complexes such as SgO3F- and SgOF-5. Complex formation competes with hydrolysis in hydrofluoric acid. These predictions have largely been confirmed. In experiments conducted in 1997 and 1998, seaborgium was eluded from cation exchange resin using a HNO3, HF solution, most likely as neutral SgO2F2 or the anionic complex ion SgO2F3 minus rather than SgO2-4. In contrast, in 0.1 M nitric acid, seaborgium does not elute, unlike molybdenum and tungsten, indicating that the hydrolysis of Sg H2O 6 6 plus only proceeds as far as the cationic complex Sg 4 H2O 2 plus or Sg 3 H2O 2 plus, while that of molybdenum and tungsten proceeds to neutral MO2 O2. The only other oxidation state known for seaborgium other than the group oxidation state of plus 6 is the zero oxidation state. Similarly to its three lighter congeners, forming chromium hexacarbonyl, molybdenum hexacarbonyl, and tungsten hexacarbonyl, seaborgium has been shown in 2014 to also form seaborgium hexacarbonyl, Sg 6. Like its molybdenum and tungsten homologues, seaborgium hexacarbonyl is a volatile compound that reacts readily with silicon dioxide. <laughs> Notes <laughs>